Mike and I have been living in the desert of the Southwest for so long now, I think we've completely taken it for granted. But there's some really unique and interesting things here in the desert. There's weird creatures like horned toads and Gila monsters, and there's really weird plants. I mean, cactus. Come on, cactus is weird, right? Needles instead of leaves? <laughs> And there's some really weird cactus around here too. So we wanted to just take a minute to show you some of this cool stuff before we leave this area. This behind me is one of my favorite cactus. If you're not familiar with cactus, it probably doesn't look like a cactus, but this is called Ocotillo. It actually does have leaves and spines. And cactus aren't the only thing in the desert with thorns. I know I've already shown you mesquite trees and cat claw trees, but I wanted to show you a cat claw in bloom because springtime in the desert is so unique. And look at the blossoms on the cat claw. They're these tiny little yellow fuzzy things, just like in Horton Hears a Who. Remember that story? They're just like the little fuzzy things where the Who's lived. The mesquite tree also has a blossom in the springtime, but I don't think it's quite as pretty or as interesting. It's just these long little yellow things that hang down and get covered with pollen. These are what the thorns look like on a mesquite tree, and sometimes they grow, these are small thorns, sometimes they grow quite long. We drove past this cactus a couple of days ago, and it was covered with like 30 of the most amazing bright, purple blossoms all over the whole cactus. We come back today and they're dead. Like we missed the opportunity to film this most beautiful thing. But this is called a jumping cactus. The real name for it is Choya. But we call it a jumping cactus because it seems like it jumps at you. Each one of these little pieces breaks off very easily. So even if, you, if you're walking past and you just brush past it and some of these prickles stick into the sleeve of your jacket or something, it will break the whole piece off and then they flip around and stick onto your skin and like 50 needles go into you all at one time. They're the most lethal cactus. Like you definitely don't want to wreck your bike into one of these. <laughs> Funny jumping cactus story. So one time I was, uh, when I was in the army, and uh, I wasn't always a good soldier. So I got in trouble enough that they confined me to base. They wouldn't let me go off base because I kept not coming in, not showing up for formation because I was partying too much. So I'd have my friends sneak me off base. I'd get in the trunk of their car and we'd drive off base and then I'd get out and you know we'd go do our thing. Well, getting back on base was a little more difficult. I had my friend drop me off at one of the perimeter fences and so I jumped the fence and I'm, you know, I'm in really good shape at that point, so I'm just jogging all the way in. And I'm running along and I bumped into one of those jumping cactus and it hit my right knee. And I was just like, oh, ow, you know, you could feel it. So I just kind of like, you know, brush it off and start running. I realized that my pants are now attached to my knee because all the spines went through, and I'm talking like 50 <laughs> spines went through my, my pants into my knees or into my right knee and now my pants are like a part of my knee and so here I am in the middle of the desert dropping my drawers pulling all these stupid needles out but I still got a time hack because my friend's gonna be waiting for me so <laughs> I'm like they're trying to pull these things out with my pants off in the middle of the <laughs> desert pulling these things out of my knee and I take off running to get <laughs> so I could go back into on the base man <laughs> <laughs> You're lucky you only got one piece of it instead of like five pieces. Oh my in god. You. And they they're one way. So it's like when you pull, your skin just pulls with it and then bink. It created like a rash on my knee for like a week. Yeah, it leaves little hairs off the cactus needles in your skin that really irritate your skin. Yeah. Like everything out here bites you, pokes you, stings you. You have to be tough to survive in the desert. <laughs> the desert isn't a joke.
Okay, I found an Ocotillo still in bloom, and this one is in our local hometown of St. David, Arizona. Check this monster out. I should have brought a measuring tape to measure how big it around it is in the bottom. Holy moly! I don't know if you can tell in camera, but this thing is so huge. And the blossoms are starting to dry up, but I think you can still see some of their vibrant color up there. And look at this guy in bloom right on the other side of the Ocotillo. This is a yucca, I believe. I think I'm saying the right one. And look at the blossoms on this. It's so laden with blossoms, the whole thing is just bending over. One of the cool things about cactus blossoms is the texture of their petals. They have this really, um, like a thick, waxy consistency. Even when you're feeling them, they almost don't feel real. They feel like something artificial. They look almost like plastic. They're just so thick and waxy. This is how big this thing is. It's ginormous. So we decided we're gonna take you to some of the coolest cactus around. Okay, the mesquite and the cat claw have unusual desert kind of blooms, but we do have trees with actual blossoms in the desert, like the Palo Verde, which is our state tree. And that's kind of the gringo Americanized way of saying it. I'm sure in Mexico they say it more like Palo Verde, which means green stick. And that's what's unusual about this tree, oops, I'm standing here on the side of the road, is that the bark is actually green and the blossoms are yellow. See how pretty it is? See how green the bark is? Because this tree actually has its chlorophyll in its bark instead of its leaves. Or I don't know, maybe it has it in its leaves too, but I know it has it in its bark. So this is also one of my top three favorite trees in the desert, Palo Verde. My third favorite tree in the desert, after the mesquite and the Palo Verde, is the desert willow, which is another beautiful blossoming tree in the desert. This is actually a fairly small one. They do get really huge and big and beautiful, but I just love the blossoms. These ones look like they're wilting. We're really late in the spring right now. It's Memorial Day weekend. So in Arizona, it's already 100 degrees here every day. So the flowers are starting to wilt and die and move on to their summer stage of tree because spring is pretty much over here. Personally, I think all cactus are interesting and cool, but there's one cactus that really stands out, like the ultra most iconic cactus that you picture in your mind when you talk about cactus, and that's the saguaro. So we brought you to Saguaro National Park. You guys, I know you probably can't believe it, but we've been like an hour, hour and a half away from this the whole 
time we've been building this bus and living in this bus and I can't believe we've waited until now to show you something this cool that was this close to us. But we're not showing you the Saguaro just at any ordinary average time. This is that ultra cool time of year when the cactus are in bloom. So we get to check out the Saguaro blossoms, which is so rare to see, you guys. Not only is it rare to see Saguaro anyway, they just don't grow in very many places. I think I think saguaro only grow in very few places of the world. And so you just don't see them very often. You certainly don't see them at the specific time of year that they're blooming and they bloom at night. So a lot of times the blossoms wilt during the day. So it's gonna be very special to try to catch some footage of cactus blooms opening on the saguaros. There's one blossom that's still open way up there on the top of this one. So we're going to go try to find some that are a little bit closer and easier to see. Remember the jumping cactus or choya that I showed you earlier today that looks something like this? This is your average ordinary run-of-the-mill choya. But there are also other breeds of choya. So growing like seven feet away from that one is a teddy bear choya. Look at this guy! Oh! My gosh, there are literally millions and bajillions of spines on this crazy teddy bear choya. Isn't that so cool? And it's growing like right next to the other ordinary choya. Crazy, huh? <gasps> Woo! Right. Guys, I just fell down in a hole. <laughs> I can't believe I just didn't hurt myself. There's more saguaro with red blooms on their hands. I've never seen that before, you guys. I thought saguaro only had white blossoms. This is so crazy. I'm thinking maybe I'm gonna learn something I didn't know on our little trip to Saguaro National Monument. We have our National Parks passport book, which is actually, um, oh here, I wanted to show you in the state of Arizona, down here. If you can see, the number 14 is where we are. So all these numbers all over the whole state are all the national monuments, national parks, and memorials. So we're just gonna try to do as many as we can in whatever area we're in in the whole United States and try to fill up our whole book with our stamps. It's so fun. Normally, the top of a saguaro looks like this. But when they bloom, they look like this, like they're wearing some kind of a crazy wig up there. But look at this, you guys. There's white blossoms and red blossoms together on the same cactus. The desert is a weird, weird place. Really nice visitor center, though. There! Saguaro National Park. Whoops! Memorial Day weekend. That smells good in here. Ooh, look at all the fun stuff. Prickly pear cactus jelly. We're so getting that. Mmm, pretty pear taffy. They have so many good things here today. You guys, it's cool to see a saguaro cactus. It's even cooler to see several saguaros in one area. But the coolest thing of all is to see hundreds or thousands of saguaros. Can you see on the screen what I'm seeing in real life? There's so many of them out there. They just look like a forest of fingers sticking up from the desert. Oh my gosh, there's so many of them. Look at the weird funky fruit hanging down on this choya lumpy little funky little dudes. I've 
never really seen these before or never noticed them before. While we're at it, we might as well talk about prickly pear. The old timers called it patty cactus, obviously, because each section is a big flat patty. And they get these little fruits on the top. This is what they look like when they're not ripe. But late in the summer, they'll be much bigger, like a big egg-shaped fruit. They start out kind of a magenta color, and then they get deeper and darker till they get this dark burgundy, and that's when they're ripe. And people make prickly pear jellies and jams and syrups and prickly pear margaritas and all kinds of delicious things out of prickly pear. So I asked Uncle Google, and it turns out that after the white flowers on the saguaro have been pollinated, they mature into a bright red fruit. I had no idea. Turns out I am learning something on this little excursion. Check out the view all around where the bus is parked right now. There's the visitor center. And then we're just surrounded by a sea of saguaros. It's so impressive. I don't know if it looks on screen as impressive as it looks in real life, but it's amazing. There are thousands and thousands of saguaros out there. It's the epic tonight. Yeah. So huge. We're here in the Sonoran Desert and I've just spotted a juvenile saguaro. And it's friendly. It's almost as tall as me. This is a really little saguaro. He's much smaller than the last one. He's only like waist high to me. He's just a little guy. Look over here, this guy's even littler. We're finding all the babies today. Oh, isn't he cute? You guys, this is the smallest saguaro I've ever seen. I never see them when they're babies. I only see them when they're huge. Okay, this is weird, you guys. This saguaro has this like mutation growing out of the top of its head. But then when you look down further, it has the same mutation on its arms also. Isn't that weird? Nature is so bizarre sometimes. I think this might be Christmas choya, which is very, very different looking than any other kind of choya. See this cool looking dried wood stuff laying on the ground? I always knew as a kid that it was called choya, but I thought it was wood from a tree, and it's not. This is the inside of a cactus, the choya cactus. This is what it looks like when the choya dies. Isn't that cool? It is like a wood, but it's not solid. It's completely hollow on the inside with all these little holes all the way around. Okay, I think I might have figured out what's going on with those crazy red saguaro fruits. So this is a flower pod before the flower has opened. These are open flowers that can now be pollinated. Once they're pollinated, they turn into a green fruit pod like this. And the green fruit pod then ripens and turns red. Then the fruit falls out on the ground to plant another cactus. And that's what the pods look like when they've opened up and dumped their fruit out. Isn't that crazy looking? They are really going after whatever's in those little fruit pods. This is a barrel cactus. And I think this one in particular might be called a fish hook barrel cactus because of the way, I mean, obviously these hooks look just like fish hooks. Can you see those good? This is a crazy mean cactus. And the fruits are already dried up, but you can kind of see the remains of one here. They look exactly like a miniature pineapple. Like, they are so cute, I can't even tell you. 
Now, when my brother and I were little kids, we were obviously quite the budding scientists, and we came up with a further classification system within the barrel cactus category, because some of them are tall and skinny, like the one I just showed you. Some of them are short and fat, like this little fella right down here. So we called them Bert and Ernie cactus. Obviously, what else would you call a tall, skinny one in a short bed? They look like Bert and Ernie's heads. We'd be on a road trip or something in the back seat, and I'd be like, I got seven Berts and 13 Ernies. What'd you get? <laughs> At the gift shop, we picked up this awesome card to send to a special someone who lives very far away. But I love that it has all the different names of the different kinds of cactus. And we also got this to send to that same special someone. Oh yeah, and also the prickly pear cactus jelly. Isn't that cute? And for ourselves, a new magnet for the collection. Obviously, I chose the saguaro blossom magnet because, you know, it just doesn't happen all year long. But this way, we can have one all year long. Over here. Aww. Yay! I like it. When we got here this morning, kind of late morning, there were still white blossoms on the saguaro cactus that were visible everywhere and no other blossoms in sight. But now, after we've been through the whole heat of the afternoon, there are no white saguaro blossoms in sight. But it's getting late in the afternoon now, so some of the other cactus are starting to open their flowers. Look at the cute little jumping cactus blossoms. They're just tiny and cute and such a vivid color of pink. This one only has a few. Let's go find some more. Here's another different kind of choya, and the flower is the same color, but it actually looks a little different. Oh yeah, and at the visitor center, I found out that these are actually called chain fruit choya. This one has all kinds of pretty pink flowers. It looks like it's been decorated. So pretty. And just look at all the saguaro tops. There's not a blossom in sight. I know they bloom at night, but I don't know exactly what time, like if they start opening as soon as the sun starts setting, or if it's not until it's completely dark and cool. We knew it was gonna be really hot all afternoon, and we would just have to stay in the shade somewhere. But we also knew it would be really cool this evening when all the blossoms start opening. Hey, look what I just found. One of those little fruit pods off of this saguaro that's growing in the middle of this tree. Whew, that sucker's tall. That's the little pod that the fruit drops out from. How cool is that? Wow, it's so neat. It's really, um, it's super thick and it literally feels just like wax like this really smooth consistency. Oh, this is so neat, you guys. I'm gonna smell it. Oh my gosh. Okay, I didn't expect it to smell like a blossom, but you guys, it smells super sweet like fruit, but I can't think of what kind of fruit, almost like a passion fruit or something like that. Wow, how interesting. This is so fun. I love how the thorns of the saguaro grow in these perfectly uniform rows. But then they do interesting things like that, where a new row starts. And each thorn isn't just one thorn. It's a whole cluster of thorns like a sea urchin. By the way, did you know that the thorns of a cactus are actually a modified leaf 
Okay, this little green bush right here is actually a Palo Verde tree that's not in bloom like the one we saw with all the yellow flowers on it. And they look different at different times of year. When it's dry conditions, they drop their leaves and they look all spindly and just like green sticks like this. But then during monsoon season, when it rains a lot, they get their leaves back. Oh, there's an Ernie. There's a Bert. There's another Ernie. Wow, you guys. This is an outstanding saguaro specimen. Holy smokes. I got to back up so I can get it all in the camera at once. Isn't that a good looking saguaro? I like that puppy. But I just want to ask, did anybody really know how big these cactus actually get? I mean, because I'm thinking when you see a cactus in a picture with its arms sticking out the way saguaros do, that like maybe you think it's about the same size as a person. But then they're tremendous. They're so huge. Like I can't even get it in the camera at the same time with me to show you how huge it really is. The green part of the cactus feels very waxy and smooth. But down near the bottom, you can tell, especially on the really big old cactuses like this, it looks just like tree bark and roots going out into the ground. So they literally do grow like a tree. And the spines inside the cactus are like wood after the cactus dies. It's just an interesting plant while it's alive. Now here's a great example of what jumping cactus do. A piece of this jumping cactus has somehow broken off and flung itself into the saguaro next door. That is what happens, you guys. Something will hit the jumping cactus or choya and a piece of it will go flipping and flinging off and stick into whatever victim is nearby. That's exactly what you don't want to happen to you. Ah, sunset in the saguaros. They're cool. We're going on a mini night hike. Cool. <laughs> That's a this high five is you. fun. It's got two hands. Oh my gosh, it does have two arms like reaching out to hug you. It's a cactus hug. <laughs> Don't hug me, you're sharp. <laughs> Honey rabbit. Yeah. Okay, so we're not going on an actual like long distance hike, just more of a little footpath really. But you never know what we might find. Dead body. <laughs> well, I hope it's not that. <laughs> Serial killer. Well, I hope it's not that either. <laughs> Neat. For the Indian sled. <laughs> Oh, that was easy. It was super easy. No blossoms opening yet. Yeah. Maybe they don't open till later at night. Maybe even until like the wee hours of the morning or something. We're back. Oh, uh. somebody's crying. She wants to come out and she's not allowed to. You're grounded, Mama Kitty. There you <laughs> There's no overnight parking 
in Saguaro National Monument. So we're just headed a couple of miles down the road to some BLM land for a free spot to park overnight. Well, you guys, we have a little bit of bad news. We weren't able to stop and camp overnight on the BLM land because the bus couldn't get there. It was a very steep, almost like a ditch that you had to go through in order to enter the BLM campsite and we, the bus just couldn't do it. So it turns out we're just going back to St. David for tonight. And we won't get to see the saguaro blossoms again in the morning, which I'm pretty disappointed. But at least we did get to see them this morning when we first got there. So I guess I'll just have to go back and look at my footage <laughs> so I can enjoy the saguaro blossoms for maybe one of the last times in a whole lot of years. We were super bummed that we didn't get to stay at Saguaro National Monument any longer, but we would have had to leave at like eight o'clock the next morning anyway. So it just wasn't worth it to drive around at night and try to find another place to park and then have barely any time in the morning. But we wanted to show you one more cactus specimen that's right here in the neighborhood where we're parked. Purple prickly pear. Sorry about the barking dog. Obviously, I didn't realize there was going to be a dog here. You just don't see them very often. Just every once in a while, you come across a purple prickly pear. They're super cool, though. That's about it for our cactus episodes, you guys. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. Right down here. Subscribe to us. Give us a like if you liked the video. Yeah, what did you guys think about all the cactus? Let us know in the comments if you guys have cactus where you're growing or if this is something really unusual for you. All right, you guys, we'll see you next week. Take care. We Bye, love you. Bye-bye.